Thank you very much. Do you mind if I take a picture? I've never given a lecture before. I just thought I'd get you really confident about my uh, presentation by saying I've never done this before. But can I can I take a picture? Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, I'll just do that. That, that, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. How exciting. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I'm not, I'm not generally a lecturer. Uh, I don't think of myself as a lecturer. I am a, I'm much more of a in the moment kind of guy. I like the conversation. So, um, but because uh, this is a lecture, I thought I should probably uh, do some lectury kind of thing. So that, I think, is what we're here for. Uh, do, do anybody here not in the right place? Yeah, you kind of, that's what you're expecting. We've had the right introduction. We're all, it, um, I, I rather like that picture because it's one of my favorite t-shirts. I, I love it. It's really good. And I, oh, I tell you, I've, I've got something else for you today. I uh, wonder what it is. What do you think those <laughs> You know me well. <laughs> I don't know if you can get that, but anyway, it says, ah, the element of surprise is my favourite element. It's extraordinary because it's, it's a very common element. It crops up all the time. You should expect it, but we never do. Um, so uh, I just wondered if you could give me a little bit of an idea um, today. Uh, is anybody arriving with a kind of really strong question? Are there a, uh, just first off, is anybody who's walked in and going, I, I really hope that we address a particular question? No, you're all just open to the flow. Fabulous. OK, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, are, how many scientists have we got in the room? Can I have a little show of hand? How many people think they're scientists? Have got engineers and doctors as well? Yeah, okay. yeah. A few more hands, OK, a few scientists. And uh, psychologists, former science. Any psychologists in the room? No, no backgrounds in that. Um, linguists, anybody who is a linguist? One linguist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a few linguists. OK, yeah. Um, and so, so those of you who didn't put up your hands, anybody who hasn't put up a hand, can you just come, give me a clue? Who else is here? What, what do you do? I work in a pulps container terminal operations. OK, fabulous. Anybody else? Uh, general manager for Marnie. For Marnie, fabulous. I'm a student. Uh-huh. Uh I'm the CEO of La Bio TV. So OK, fabulous. Facility management. So you've all given me wonderful answers in great language. So you're linguists as well, by the way. We are all linguists, OK? So, so one of the things I'm going to try and challenge you on is these boxes that we tend to put around ourselves or around each other, because this is where quite often we get a lot of misunderstanding. Um, and if you're trying to work together with people, misunderstanding is going to get in the way. So, we, so it, it's always worth just checking assumptions for things. Now. Um, I've got a bunch of postcards as well, and I wonder if I can just sort of get people to kind of grab some of these and pass them back, or, you know, as many as you like. They, and what I'd love it if, if anybody has, through the lecture, um, you know, some feedback for me about what's working for you really well, because I haven't given a lecture before, or something that you, know, you kind of think, oh, that was a really good point, I'd love to know, so that if I ever am invited to lecture again, uh, I've got some clues about what to do. Uh, well, next time. So that would be really helpful. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh dear, I've gone there. So, so there are a few flashing images uh, in this talk, and I thought I should probably say that. Um, how many of you have heard of Simon Sinek? And start with why. A few people. So, yes, yeah, so start with why. They're, 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 in essence, there's his reference. Uh, he, he said, uh, he, he tells a little story of Apple and IBM. IBM used to be a biggest computer manufacturer, and they knew what they did. They produced computers. They did it brilliantly. They said, we'll do the best computers. And Apple came along, and they said, we're going to unleash your creativity. So Apple had a why, and IBM had a what, and the why was the thing. It didn't matter that they, Apple made computers or whatever it is. They just said, we're, the reason we're going to do this is to unleash your creativity. So it's a powerful story. Now, um, although it says start with why, I'm going to start with how. So having told you that's a good idea, which I think it is, purpose is always really, really important. The art of leading together is all about the how, I would say. That might be controversial. I think it is. And if you think about that, what the how is, the how is the process. It's, it's what's going on. And what's going on right now is I'm going talky-talky at you lot, and you've got, you lot are, some of you are listening, I hope. Um, so there's an interaction. and. And I've got some thoughts in my head, and I'm going to try and share them with you. And it's got to travel across the space between me and you. And it's got to get to you, and then you're going to process it. 
and we're going to work out whether we understand the same thing. So how is critical to partnership working? It's, it's really all about that communication process, uh, what we understand, and then how we, how we do things together. So uh, the proposition that I've come with, so uh, thank you very much, Grace, for the introduction. Uh, I just thought I'd work through my own logic and just sort of see. I'm, by the way, uh, as you'll find out later, I'm a geographer. You'll, uh, it does come up. So excuse the colours. I love colours. <laughs> uh, being teased about it, but don't really mind. Uh, so the proposition, the talk is about the art of leading together. The art, and an art is a, a skill, a process, it's a, it's a, it's a whole skill set, rather, is about the challenge of leading among leaders. The challenge is set in our mental landscapes. So I've just mentioned the how. That's where it takes place in the mental landscapes uh, which we have between us. Is that working? Maybe I'm on the wrong side of the machine. Uh, so our mental landscapes are shaped enormously by competition uh, all around us. All of you, all of us, we're bumping into competition the whole time. But competition can help or hinder collaboration. So it's not a zero-sum game. I think a lot of people say competition and start talking about competition and they kind of make assumptions about it being either one or the other. We're competing or we're working together, but we can't do both, which uh, is not true. Uh, after all, you can't be in a winning team unless you're collaborating within that team. So competition has layers. Um, I'm, uh, I'm having a bit of a click problem. Am I doing the right thing? Yeah. So collaboration is essential for leading together, facing the wrong way. Uh, and it requires us to give up degrees of control. So uh, I'm left with the question, well, is it worth it? I've got to give up control. That sounds risky. How happy am I to give up control? And how much do I have to give up? How's that going to work? How am, I going to be, how am I going to achieve my goals and my aims if I'm giving control up? These are perfectly reasonable questions. Uh, so I have a hypothesis. Uh, and the hypothesis is, yeah, damn right it is. The challenge is worth it. And if you're wondering what the challenge was, it was giving up degrees of control so we can collaborate and lead among leaders, which is what the art of leading together is all about. So that's why we're here. It took me a little while, but uh, that's, that's the aim. Perfect for jet lag students, this. Yeah. <laughs> got that? Okay, got that. So uh, I went out and I consulted in Westminster. I spoke to a bunch of people who were really into leadership. A lot of them about, funnily enough, at the moment in Westminster. Uh, and, uh, and I asked them, so what do I, you know, and their response to my health hypothesis was, what? You've got to be kidding, really? And I said, no, no, it all happens in mental landscapes. It's really simple, just like quantum mechanics. That's why I was asking about scientists. <laughs> really, really simple. Don't forget I'm a geographer, OK? Um, uh, so you get collaborative advantage, and with that you can find impossible solutions. Quantum mechanics is about holding two states at once, is my very, very uh, layman's view of it. And, and I genuinely believe it's, it's as important as this life on, pla on the planet depends on it. We'd better get it right. Because uh, if we are unable to collaborate effectively, uh, we are unable to meet the challenges of our times. I would say that as a categorical truth. So um, hopefully uh, that all makes sense so far. So um, I should probably say... Having, having rattled along about what I'm... Uh, oh, yeah, so simply put, there are just two key ideas behind it, mental landscapes and science. So I'm asking you, I'm saying to you, we need to break with convention, we need to be creative, we need to think a bit differently. Um, but I am also saying to you that everything that I think is based on my best understanding of what science tells us. I think science is really, really, really important because it's where we, we discover what works and what doesn't. It can, it can seem complicated, um, but science is really important. So um, the skills and experiences uh, make up the art, of course, but this basis is critical. So I'm, what I've done, by the way, is I've taken a workshop that I give over a day and I've, kind of, I've, I've sort of tried to make this introductory session um, the basis, the sort of in, the introductory part of that, where I'm explaining what, under, what underlies the thinking. So the art requires some patience. I, I know that there will be people sitting in this audience 
who will be kind of wanting me to get on and tell you what to do <laughs> and give you some tips and say, here's how we do it. And we'll come to that, hopefully, in some questions and answers. And, I should, and I'll hold up my hand and say, I am a real doer. I've had to learn to be patient. Uh, it's taken me a long time. Um, so who am I? Uh, well, you've heard a bit about my, my career. So when someone says, who am I? I might say, yeah, well, I work for the Chamber of Commerce. I used to bring people together, gaze into the future, and say, what can we do in business that we can't do on our own? The public, the private, and voluntary sector. That's where my journey in this sort of began in the 1990s. Uh, you've heard some of those other parts of the, of the story there. So that might be an answer to who I am. And quite often, the conversation might move on. But who am I? Who am I? Have I really answered the question? Uh, I've told you what I've done. Sorry, I'm... I'm uh, there we are. Uh, so, there's a bit more about me. Uh, I enjoy gardening. I'm married. Daughter, 24, two sons. Got this master's. Love sport. I'm a, I've told you I'm a geographer already, and I'm very, very passionate about nature, which for me is, you know, all of science. Everything we know, everything that's possible is nature. Uh, I've, I'm pretty well travelled. I've been very, very lucky. I've, I've gone around the world, even with my kids, when they were very small. Who am I really? <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm all those things. Those are bits of me. I'm also... Oh, two things came up there at once. So, I am a constantly curious serial optimist. This is my nature. This is who I am in the world, how I am in the world. Remember I said how. How am I? Uh, I've got a deeply buried competitive streak. I remember, I can still remember being four and being really, really upset and crying because I lost a game. It was a game called Sorry and you were basically sent back to the beginning and I still remember it vividly. I kind of, oh, I hated losing. Horrible child I must have been. Difficult for my brothers and sisters and for my parents. Uh, so I, I wasn't a good kid in that respect. It means I'm really determined. I've probably got anger issues. <laughs> Probably, somewhere in here, you know? Uh, and I don't think in straight lines, as you could see, and you'll continue to see. Uh, part of this is I am ambitious, so I've got a day-long talk, and I'm going to try and go Bruah! in less than an hour so that we can then have some good conversation, because that's what I really want to do. So um, the, the point is that we're off... So this is a partnership point, so, OK? I'm making a point now about working together. Don't be satisfied with the first answer. You have to get deeper. If you want to work with people, you need to understand who am I? Who are we together? So it's, I mean, this is kind of a bit, I'm in a lecture theater. I, funny enough, I went to an event where I was asked uh, by a facilitator to, to answer that question, who am I? And then they rang the bell and said, yeah, do it again and do it again. Amazing, uh, in a short period of time, less than 10 minutes, a room full of people really felt like they knew each other. So, and this is partly why I had that question up at the beginning. Have you guys sat and told each other something that you've never told them before? So asking good questions. You don't have to say, who are you, who, are, who am I, who am I? You don't have to do that. But you can ask another question. So don't, don't just stop with the first one. If you want to work in partnership, you, you need to work on getting to know each other. OK. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> There's some other stuff. So, so I've done all this, OK, over 25 years, uh, longer. Well, so I suppose I've been working for uh, 35 years. And I tried a lot of different things. And when people ask me what I did, uh, this would happen. Uh, so the, that should be going around like a kaleidoscope. But obviously, there's not bandwidth. But my head would go, oh, oh, oh. I would struggle to tell people, what am I? What do I do? Do I have a job? I do all sorts of things. I don't want to be in a box. Um, so uh, here I am being a, a, a lecturer. And all of those stories, you will all have lots of stories about who you are. Um, and we all carry them with us in all contexts. Whether the, the first slide was me in a suit going like that. Whether you wear a suit in work or whether you wear casual clothes or whether you're working with animals or whatever else, or you're still working with other people, you will carry your whole life story with you wherever you go. Oh, sorry. So who would like to play a bit of a game? Anybody? I'd like some volunteers. Uh, it's an easy game. 
uh, and uh, nobody will be embarrassed. I just need a selection of, say, six or eight people to come down the front, at least, and I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you're going to move, and that's it. So down here, <laughs> and the rest of you who don't want to play, just watch, OK? And I'd like you to observe what happens. It doesn't matter. The numbers don't really matter. The numbers don't massively matter. So thank you very much, our wonderful volunteers. Brilliant. Thank you. So what I'd like you to do is, like, we're gonna, have you played these scale, you know, these along the line games before? Where you're kind of asked, you know, here's one end of a scale, and here's another end of a scale. You can see there's nice little lines here. So if, like me, you don't mind standing up front, I mean, you're probably all fairly extrovert because you stood up. <laughs> So uh, if, like me, you don't mind standing in front of people and talking, come over here. You're really, really extrovert, and you get your energy from talking and being with other people. If you actually prefer to be quietly behind the scenes, I'd really rather stay behind the curtain. I don't want people looking at me. Then come over here. And anything in between? OK. OK, so there's a scale here, different preferences. Yeah? OK. OK. So you've got some different preferences here. Remember, we're talking about how people are. And these are things that these, so you, sir, your name? Martin. Martin. You don't mind standing up and talking. No. You're fine with that. Do you talk quite a bit? I do. You have a fair bit to say? Sometimes. How comfortable are you with silence? Very. Very. And in conversation with other people, do you ever fill gaps a bit, if, they're sort of, if it seems to be stretching on a bit? After day one lectures, I realised I do it a lot, but uh, I'm trying my best not to. Good man. Good man. This is a really important point. Uh, and down at the other end, your name, sir? Uh, Richard. Richard. OK. So uh, my guess is that you tend to be a little bit more reflective. Is uh, that...? Yeah, I, I guess I'd probably be a little bit more, but yeah. I don't, yeah. Like, to, I don't really like... To, I don't like public speaking in that sense. I don't, yeah. I don't like conversation, but I don't like speaking to people. Okay. And so when you get an idea or something, do you like to sort of uh, take it in, think about it for a while, and then work out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. OK. So here we have two kinds of preference that you will often meet when you're talking to people in partnerships. And you don't know what, they, what their preferences are when you walk into a room. Even if you've found out a bit about them, you won't necessarily know how they're processing what's going on. Now, at this end of the scale, if you're like me on a loud mouth, you had to just just button it a bit, you know, every now and again, because otherwise you won't hear what the guys down this end have got to say. And often it's really valuable and important. OK? So there's something important about that. Um, we'll just do uh, one, other, uh, one other one of these. So if you like uh, the, the grand big picture, you know, you kind of like the big vision, then come and stand up at this end. And if you like uh, the detail, you want to... Oh, sorry. Sorry, whoever that was. <laughs> you know, you, you really like... You know, I love a spreadsheet. I love to get... I want to get the detail. I want to get every single thing precisely right. You know, and I want, to, I want to see everything that there is in the detail. Where are your preferences? Move if you need to. So detailed at this end and big vision at that end. You can be both. Or you can stand in the middle. Yeah? Yeah? So... Um, so this is another, so if you're in teams, of course, you need skills of different types. So you actually want some diversity in, because if you, I work uh, with a charity, I run a charity, we tend to attract a lot of people who are up here. They love the big vision. I want to change the world, I want to make it, and they're marvellous, and they're really good and creative in lots of ways. Um, you say, are you creative? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you, you like to kind of paint that big picture and yes. look at the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. And do you find, and uh, let me just ask, and, and, and Madame down the other end, sorry, your name was? Antoine. Antoine. Thank you. And Madame? Scar. Scar. And, and how do you see things? You kind of, you, you also see the big picture, I'm guessing? Yeah, I see the big picture, but I want to uh, scrutinize further, like get the, the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty, yeah. Yeah. Now, here's another little <coughs> tension that you will find sometimes, because these are both really important, OK? And if you're, do you, sir, ever, ever find uh, you're kind of a bit impatient when people are slowing things down because they're asking questions that you really kind of, just, let's do this? Do you feel that ever? Moderately. Moderately, no, sometimes. No, OK. Your staff, 
Okay. okay. And, and madam, do you, do you ever kind of feel a bit like, slow down, hang on, we haven't dealt with this yet. Yes. You're, you're running away. Yeah. yeah, okay. Both important views, okay? They both matter, they both count, it's a similar kind of thing. Um, that you may sit down, ladies and gentlemen. How many people recognised? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. How many people recognised those two scales, what we were doing? Anybody? Uh, yes, in the back. Madam? You recognise it. Does anybody recognise know what it is? Yes, sir. Yeah, but uh, can, I, can I say something about it? Please, do. Because um, I think I'm one person who, who, who transitioned. Yes, good so point. From being um, like Scar, being someone who sits down, look at every nitty gritty, but as I grew up in management, to see a bigger picture, I sometimes see how people like Scar can delay us and mm. still not meeting <laughs> deadlines, <laughs> still wanting to analyze, get things right. But we want to move forward. Yeah. So Absolutely. So there is a movement. So that's a really, thank you, your name, sir? Kumbulani. Kumbulani. So he's made a really good point that. There, there is movement in this. You saw people moved up and down it. You can move in different situations. You may behave in slightly different ways. It's not a box. So did anybody recognize the, the, where this model comes from? There are two more lines. It's called Myers-Briggs. Myers-Briggs, OK? It's a team working tool. And, and I think it's often used slightly inappropriately because partly because we have a tendency to put ourselves in a box or to feel that you've put someone in a box. Oh, that's the person who's like that. Now, we're people and we have moods and we change and stuff changes. So we exactly your, your wonderful point there. We do move up and down the scales. So I wanted to do that for you. It's a really, really simple exercise. You can, I, I can, uh, you can look up Myers-Briggs scales. You can find out what the questions are about. And you could do this with any kind of group of people and find out a lot. There's, I, could do, I could do a day's workshop probably just on that and where people are standing, how they feel about where they're moving, why and, and what. It's, it's really important stuff. There are other ways of doing this kind of work. I find that a very simple, very effective one uh, and it's fun. So um, something else I believe as well is that people learn a lot by doing. So, so uh, we all have different learning styles. Some people will love pictures. Some people will like the writing. Uh, and some people will learn best by doing something. So again, our own learning preferences and styles, all of these things about how am I will, will be a factor in how successful you are in working together with other people, especially when the others are leaders. And we'll come on to more, more about that now. So uh, you may think. You're looking at the same thing. This is my office down in Bristol. It's called the Happiness Hub. I rent space, lots of, you know, it's almost completely empty there. My charity sits at this end, and I rent lots of space to other people who do good work at the far end. Um, so, you know, you may think you're looking at the same thing. I've completely abandoned my notes. <laughs> I wonder what I was meant to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so you may think you're looking at the same thing, uh, but, as we've just been showing, I think, in that exercise, it depends on what you're looking through. So the first picture is taken uh, at one place, and then I just dropped like that, which well, is a different time. We have a fish tank. So can you see the fish in the picture? OK, that's a bit odd. <laughs> so it depends. And you can't rely on people seeing the same thing as you. OK, you may come around the idea of working together, and you've walked into the room, and you think, yes, we're here to solve world poverty. We can do that. Depends a lot <laughs> on what you're seeing and what you're thinking. So uh, that the learning point, I guess, is uh, I put it, find ways to speed date. Find ways of asking good questions of other people that you're going to be working with to get to know them. Yeah? Uh, I think. For years, so in the, in the, when I started on my, I can't call it a career, can I really? Because I've done so many different things. But I, when I started work, um, it, it seems that uh, there was a very, very strong division between the idea of work. I mean, work, 
and I wear my work clothes and I behave like someone in work. And then I walk out of work and I can be me. And I think that idea is now being challenged, thank God, strongly by lots of wonderful companies, by, by younger people who are saying, why are you doing that? <laughs> you know, so um, anyway, find ways to speed date. So uh, here's another learning point. Uh, you can't work with people you don't trust. You cannot work with people you don't trust, which is why you need to know who am I? Who are you? Yeah, so important. And when we had that little line, and, you're, and there will be people who you want to work together, and we're leaders, and we're going to go places. There will be people who are quite impatient about sort of going on there, and they go, why are we spending time having this you know, bonding session? Why, <laughs> why, why are we playing? I've got work to do. We haven't got time for this. <laughs> you know? And if you don't spend the time on it, you are definitely not going to perform as well, I would say as if you do spend that time. So it, but there is a tension, and it's, it's important to recognize it, to name it, notice it, and to allow for it. Because it's OK for people to be feeling like that. It's real for them. If it's real for them, it's real for all of you. Yes? Truly, I understand. But trust develops over time, over time. So yes. what happens after, you know, it breaks? It can do. That's a great question. I have a little, little bit later on for you. Da, da, that's great. I'm not going to answer it just right at this moment. But yes, it's a very good point. So we'll hold that question. Trust can be built, but it can also be broken. It can be, it can be fragile. Yeah, it can break quite quickly and easily. And then, so my quick answer to you is that depends on how strong the relationships are, how resilient they are. You know, with, with, if you have spent time building strong, deeper relationships, they're likely to weather difficulties much better. Yes, ma'am. I would like to contra-react contra to that. I would say, you know, you need to develop that relationship in order to not reach the conflict, to not break the trust. So mm. you need to at least give it a chance to, you know, to build that. It is true. And then, you know. Thank you, yes. And we'll also come on to this. Thank you. That's another good point. Um, I think, I, I think they might have done. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry. no, 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 it's perfectly, it's, it's great. Um, so I want to say to you all now that nothing ever goes great all the time. Nothing is going to work perfectly. And you don't get this wonderful, for some reason, our thinking has evolved around the idea of getting things perfect and right. And we just build on what works. And it goes better, and it gets better, and it gets better, and it gets better. But it doesn't. Life isn't like that. So even if you're doing well, things are going to go badly, things are going to go wrong. That's not failure, that's life. OK? So these things are going to come up. Uh, and I say mental landscapes are like real ones, because in your mind, you know, these, these things that you have to climb over, walk around, navigate across, they are real to you. And Right now, I don't know what your mental landscape is, ma'am. I don't know. If we were to walk together, you might suddenly go, whoa. <laughs> and I would go, what was that? <laughs> yeah? They're real. They're real. OK. So let me recap. Mental landscapes, impressions, those first questions you ask, they're only clues. You know, we make so many assumptions so fast. How do they look? Ah, this guy, covered in tattoos. Oh, he looks really strong. I'm a bit scared. You know, oh, you know, he could be a mental health care nurse who's the <coughs> kindest person you've ever met, who would do anything to help you. Yeah? So first impressions, they're shallow. They're only clues. Don't, don't race into what you think you know. Uh, we're not wired the same. So expect different responses from your own. Just because you think you're agreeing, that you think you're going the same way together, does not mean that people are going to do the same thing. OK? So, and we live in that mental landscape. We live in it. Yeah? 
Uh, so to travel together, we have to see together. And the only way you can see that mental landscape is to explore it. OK, so I hope that's, that's part one. Whew. How are we doing? Good. OK. OK, so what's the big picture? You know, we wanted to know what the big picture was. Uh, that's where you live? OK. That's where we live. And that is somewhere there. So that's quite big. That's probably only a little bit of it. Who knows? We, we're kind of small. <laughs> but this is real. OK, so that's the really big picture. It's too big, eh? <laughs> that's a bit too much. So let's make it smaller, shall we? OK. How about this? Anybody recognize those? Yeah. DNA. Chromosome mapping, Ooh, that's what makes us up. It's the same stuff. That big thing, that little thing, it's all the same. It's all the same stuff. It's the only thing, in my view, that is totally real. Uh, I'm just going to let you sit with that for a moment. Uh, you might say, oh, come on, just make it real. Come on, that's not, I can't do anything with that. OK. <laughs> that helped. Uh, there's nature, a version, a bit of nature. What an amazing variety. What fabulous pattern that we've got there. Uh, what possibilities. That's real. You know, we need food. We are made of nature. Uh, that's what, that's, that's, this is what life is about. OK. Uh, does anybody recognize what that is? Brain. Yeah, it's a brain scan. Thank you. It's a brain scan. And it's amazing how quickly we've leapt forward in our understanding of how we work. Um, so that's a neurological scan. It's very pretty. I'm a geographer. Lovely colors. I'm happy. Uh, so in my brain and all of yours, you've got about 100 billion neurons. And we started off looking at the galaxy and going, oh, there's a lot of stars. There's a lot of stuff going on there. 100 billion neurons. You guys are clever. You're really clever. <laughs> yeah? Man, you're clever. Every single one of those has about 100 trillion connections. How are we doing with numbers? Anybody good with numbers? I'm not. That's, that's, that's big. That's big. Every one of those connections, every one of those connections is firing at 5 to 50 times a second. Right now, in this room, how many of us are there? 40, 40 something people with 100 billion neurons firing 5 to 50 times a second across 100 trillion connections in every head. That's what's going on. So when you want to do partnership working, <laughs> yeah, when you want to do partnership working, there's quite a lot going on. OK? So that is an average brain, whatever an average brain is. OK? My point here is that we are wired for complexity. We're made for it. We're made of it. We are nature. Well, this is who we are, OK? So if you feel daunted or worried about complexity and, oh, I can't take it all in, just remember, we're made of the stuff, OK? So I'm, I'm giving you the idea that if you can relax into that, if you can relax into being what you are, you have increased your chances of success <laughs> dramatically. I don't know how much, by. I haven't done the study. Will you do it for me, Grace? <laughs> In my extensive <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> OK. So we are wired for complexity. The trouble is, oh, no, I've blew it. <laughs> ah, two clicks, and it's gone. Is that black and white? Yeah. So would you have said, before I click twice, would you say that's black and white? Yeah. Yes. It's simple. That's black and white. And you're right, until, of course, I do that. Yeah? Hmm? That is Pink Floyd's album. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, we're back to what I said about how. I'm sorry if I'm overemphasizing this. But I'm doing it because when we work in conventional ways, 
people just don't think about this stuff. We're too busy thinking about why and what. And the how, the how, the how really, really matters. And some people are better at being with the how than others. Sometimes I'm not very good at it. Sometimes you can be brilliant at it, and other days not so good. Life is a process. It's not a snapshot. So I'm sure a lot of you have made plans, business plans, holiday plans, other plans. And they were good plans, yeah? And then stuff happened. Oh, dear, I had to change it. Well, went, you know. So, but we get very attached to these plans, don't we? I've made a plan, we're going to go this. Oh, I'm failing. It's going wrong. It's not happening. That's because life is a process. It's obvious, I know. It's really, really obvious. It's worth saying because I think we often get uncomfortable when things aren't going how we want them to go, little realizing or recognizing that this is normal. Can I just check, by the way, how many people think they're normal? How many people are normal in here? Normal. 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 Are you normal? Yeah. Of course you are. We're all, what is normal? Exactly. It's a stupid question, isn't it? Because of course, we're, everybody's normal, but we're all normal different. I'll tell you a little story. Um, I'm way off script here. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, a, uh, there's a wonderful book. I've bought a few resources for you. This book I hugely recommend, The Wisest One in the Room. It's fantastic. This book is by uh, Thomas Gilovich and Lee Ross. Uh, and they, don't worry, it's on the slides. You'll get this later. They, they, they gathered lots of psychological experiments. Uh, in the first half of the book, they're saying, us, this is how we really are. This is how we work. This is what's happening when we're, when we're thinking about things, when we're responding to things. And they have a lovely story about um, driving. Now, most people who can drive a car tend to think, I'm a pretty good driver. Yeah? Is that right? Most people think, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good driver. Yeah. I'm OK. I won't win the Grand Prix, but I'm OK. I'm good. OK. Now, when you're driving your car, you know what you're capable of. You know what the conditions of the road are. Oh, it's raining. I'm going to slow down. Oh, there's kids around. I'm going to slow down. Whatever. Nice big open, whoa, I can go a bit quicker, whatever. I know my capabilities. I know how skillful I am. I know what the conditions are. I'm driving the right speed. I'm driving the right speed. This is good. Woo! Some guy goes past me like a rocket. I go, what are you doing? <laughs> OK, whatever the reason is. But that guy, probably a guy, probably a young guy, <laughs> uh, is thinking, I know what I'm doing. I know what the conditions are like. I'm good. I've got a good car. I, I know how to do this. So as far as he's concerned, it's exactly the right thing to be doing. And the same thing if I end up behind, stuck behind someone who's going really, really, really slowly. You know, and I want to go a bit quicker. I'm going, oh, come on. Now, every single person, that's their normal. Yeah, so I'm, it's, it's laboring the point, but uh, it's called the objectivity illusion. And we are all. All of us uh, pray to this all of the time. You know, so my normal, this is one of my lenses. Remember the fish tank? This is how I'm looking at stuff. And so it's normal. Uh, we have to keep checking our assumptions about normal because normal isn't the same. Yeah? It's, a, it's, a, it's the, probably the most common trap, the most common problem you face when you're trying to lead with people together. OK. Uh, oh. It's great. I'm going way past my nose. Uh, so I've done all that. Um, yeah. So it kind of feels obvious. Does it feel obvious, most of what I've said? Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, come on, Mike. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> yeah? It's all, and in a way, I think that's part of the challenge. A lot of it is fairly obvious. But we still need to say it. We need to check it. We need to share it. Because yes, it's obvious when you think about it. And a lot of the time, we're not really thinking about it because we've got the goal. We've got to, I'm just doing, because I've got to get, you know, I know what I need to do. 
and we're not necessarily thinking about what's obvious. So, uh, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, anybody recognize uh, Go, that symbol? Yeah? Anybody know what that? Sorry? It's a, it's a supply and demand curve. Yeah, supply and demand curve, nice and easy. Supply goes up, demand goes down. Simple, simple economics. Yeah, everyone knows that. Uh, what's wrong with it? Anyone? There's nothing wrong with the diagram itself. What's wrong with the idea? Assumptions. Sorry? Um, the assumptions. The assumptions, exactly. So what's missing? So we've made it nice and simple, but so simple that it's not very useful in some ways. Yes, it sort of works in some circumstances, but there's loads of stuff about the supply and the demand that in, is not in that graph. Yeah, so you can't, really, you can't really use that. You can use it as a very rough idea, but not much more than that. Um, then, hopefully, uh, I guess you will recognize, I'm now nervous about clicking too far. Go. You recognize this symbol. Uh, so the symbol for yin and yang, or the Tao. I'm not familiar with the whole, I know, it's I have read uh, the Tao Te Ching, it's wonderful poetry sort of stuff. Uh, still don't fully understand it, but it's great. <laughs> uh, so this symbol, I think, personally, is what the universe is kind of all about. I think this is the secret to everything, all of life. Yeah? It's about balance. It's about balance. So things are neither all one thing nor all the other. Yeah? They're both. There's some sort of movement in there. There's a little bit of one inside the other. I talked about my repressed anger issues. I run a charity called Happy City, for goodness sake. It's well-being focused. People expect me to be the happy guy. Mostly, I kind of am. Doesn't mean I'm not pretty cross about some things. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it's important to acknowledge that, you know. So, uh, what's wrong with it, though? Anybody, as I've done it there. I'll, okay, I'll put you out of your misery. What I think is wrong with it is it's flat. It's flat. And most of the things that we share and learn and we're trying to do together, we flatten, we put it on paper. We put it in two dimensions on an axis. It's either this or it's that. It's one or the other. Do you anybody know what this looks like if you make it real? Anybody guess? I, d I found a stress ball and I started coloring it in. Do you know what it is? OK. I brought one along for you. Here's one I made earlier. Are you good at catching? Who's good at catching? I'm going to throw that up in the audience, and hopefully, boom, there's a catch. And boo! Oh, have a look at that. What is it? And chuck it around a bit. What is it? It's a, it's a tennis ball. If you have a look at it, and look at the angle, you'll see that, that it's sort of wrapped around in sort of two kind of bone shapes. But if you look at it at the right angle, you'll see that's what that shape is. So what happens when it's real? Do you want to chuck it to me? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, go! Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, oh, I dropped that one. So two different things happened there. I caught one, didn't catch the other. Oh, possibilities. Different stuff happened. What else happened? What else is what's happening now to this that you can't see there? Yeah, it's moving. It's got energy. It's got dynamism. You can do whatever you want with it. There you go. You can carry on playing with those. <laughs> so, so, this is another thing that I think is a really, really basic thing. It's very obvious, but we don't think about it. We need to know it doesn't name it. Real life is real. <laughs> real life is more than three-dimensional, OK? Uh, what's my next slide? Yeah, OK, I can do that. Um, the world is not flat. The world is both and. Both and. There are either ors. It can be either or. So a how many of you are computer scientists or know anything about computer language? 
a, a couple. So they, computers, they work, don't they? On, they're, they're, they're very simple, right? Yeah. Very, very simple. How do they work? What, they, what happens with the switching? Binary. binary. So they are binary. Computers that work with binary. They're either or, on or off, one, zero. Nothing else. And computers do all this incredible stuff, just like life, because, yes, they're binary, but they're binary in arrays. They're binary on binary on binary on binary on binary. So much happening. Remember the brains. All at the same time. That's life. And we tend to think it's either this or that. I think it really never is. <laughs> because life is a process. OK? So I think, uh, and I, I, I hope you'll forgive me for labor, laboring this, especially if you feel it's obvious, uh, because I think it's a, it's a kind of... It's a hidden narrative. It's a conversation that isn't in the open. We know it, but we don't know it. We know it, but we don't say it. The assumptions that we're making when we're working with other people keep going wrong because we forget that we're life. <coughs> yeah? Put simply. So how things really are is not often how we show them. That's a bit more like it. I showed you chromosomes. I showed you the sun and the stars. Stuff goes around other things. I said I don't think in straight lines. I kind of think like that. Uh, there's a lovely talk by a guy called uh, Tim Urban. It's, uh, it's about um, he procrastinates. He puts things off. He says, why do I do this? I have a deadline. I have to do it, but I keep doing something else. It's a funny talk. I really enjoyed it. And his talk is called Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. So I thought, what happens in my head? Why is it, Mike? that people say, I like you. You're a nice guy. Good conversation. It was interesting. No idea what you meant. <laughs> Where did that come from? And in a way, when that happens, what I notice is because I'm thinking in orbits. I'm thinking around. So I disappear out of view. I'm out of shot for a while. And then I come back in and go, hey. And to me, it makes perfect sense. I know why it makes sense. It's revolving around purpose. And for me, it makes excellent sense, but it's not a nice straight line. And I'm not thinking the same way as other people necessarily are. So uh, again, to, to, to get to how we're doing. Gosh, I've, taken, I've, I've nearly taken my whole hour. So there's energy and momentum. I've mentioned that. Uh, the learning point, balanced thinking is not binary. We live in at least five dimensions. If you ask a scientist, I Googled this, how many dimensions are there? Uh, does anybody know? Probably no, nobody does. Seven? Seven, I, uh, maybe 11. Who knows? This is quantum. This is where you get into quantum physics kind of territory. Possibilities. I caught one ball, I dropped one ball. Multiverse. The multiverse. Exactly. It's real in a way. As far as we know, our best science says this is real. We might not really kind of, you know, get a, you know, you, you can't go to the cafe and say, uh, you know, let's talk quantum physics. That doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the point is that the, the reality is that there are always opportunities. There are always possibilities that one could consider. So when we're thinking about things, and it's either this or it's that, one has to hold it quite lightly because there are other things that could go on. Purpose, I feel, is like gravity. You know, so uh, gravity holds things together. Our solar system. You know, the planet we're on with other planets revolves around a sun with some mass. If you think, I think, I, I've got another whole kind of talk about this. I think it's quite fun. Um, that you can map your purposes like gravity. And I've done this. If you think, what matters to me? What are my goals in life? What are the things that are really most important to me? And uh, you think about them in terms of how important they are. You, that's kind of like the gravity. So we behave in that sort of way. The more important it is to you, the more the gravity is, the greater the pull, the more you're going to be wanting to do that kind of thing. And the things that are lesser important, they might float off completely, but they're, you know, they're, they're in outer orbits. Now, when you're in partnership working, that those purposes, again, there are more, there's more than one purpose. You may have one big purpose. There are more, there's more than one thing going on. So purpose does dictate form. Uh, I made this diagram. 12 years ago, I think now, when we were setting up Happy City. Uh, that, the roots, that's your mental landscape, if you like. That's your how. And what happens there dictates 
the structure, the systems, and the actions and the behaviors. Everything else follows from what you're thinking. Um, I'm trying to speed up now because I want to get there. So transformation happens down there. Change gets organized in the systems and structures, and the ideas then get mucked about with by all of us at the top. And then the cycle continues. You think of a tree, it goes back down into the thinking space. Yeah? So it is a whole cycle. Um, I'm, I'm racing along a bit because I want to get some practical stuff and some questions with you. Um, hold things lightly. So that tennis ball. Um, how many people are familiar? Uh, I, how many people play a lot of sport or enjoy sport? A few. What happens uh, when you kind of start gripping things a bit tightly, when you're kind of getting a bit anxious or you're sort of, you know, start tightening up? How well do you perform? Yeah. Yeah. You lose your ability to perform when you tighten up. You can't, you, you, you know, if your body flows, you're relaxed, you're confident, you barely have to think. You are just, then you're performing your best possible way. Hold things lightly. It's, you know, uh, the, the master's degree I did, which David Marshall was, uh, David Murphy was uh, teaching on all those years ago, my tutor, Judy, um, said to me, hold things lightly. And I would say, that's, that's what I learned in two years of my master's. Hold things lightly. It's all I need. It's my mantra. And I really strongly urge you, when you go into work with other people in leadership, to hold things lightly. Or you will lose your flow, is what I predict. So to recap the science, we are nature. We're made of it. We are completely governed by nature's rules. It is impossible not to be governed by nature's rules. Nature's rules are that it actively seeks balance. Gravity affects everything. Energy is nature's driver. And nature holds all of possibility. OK? Simple, isn't it? Now, <laughs> I'm not going to make you do that. <laughs> uh, I've got a choice for you. And you can see there um, that I'm going to ask for this not to be filmed, because it would spoil the exercise for anybody subsequently playing the game. Be as reflective and as critical as you can of the situation. OK? Test the assumptions. Push back against them. Challenge each other. And if people are doing that to you and you're feeling frustrated, value it. Value it is what I encourage you to do, because it can transform what happens. OK. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done now. I said, uh, because I do want to get to the questions, we've had an hour. Um, so there's a whole bunch. So I'm talking about the art of leading together. And I hope I've been really clear that it's about a process. It's about understanding that we're alive, uh, that everything that we do is living, and therefore not totally predictable, changeable all the time. You know, right now in our bodies, of course, lots going on. Um, and here are some mindsets and some practices that are useful. I met, we did the, both the Myers-Briggs uh, thing at right at the beginning. Power of questions. Questions are so, so powerful. Um, there's a lot written about questions. And uh, many of you may well be very good at asking questions, may do this professionally. Questions set the direction of travel. They sign you. So you start having the conversation that the question asks, unless someone asks another question. Yeah? So pay attention to the questions enormously. It's like the framing game I just showed you. Um, it can make a huge difference. So be curious. Be constructive. This, I think, is a reference back to the question about trust and trust breaking. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Things will go wrong. So appreciative inquiry is a whole uh, field of work, which is fabulous. And uh, in it, in essence, it says, in every single situation, something works. Find, name the problem, sure. Name the challenge, and then look within the whole system for what works and design on the best of what works so that you can, you can move constructively forward. So a um, uh, really good book uh, called Solutions Focused by Mark McCurgow, worth looking at. Um, purposeful, that's the gravity bit. Why are we here? What are we doing? Well-being measures and scales. I run a charity called Happy City. I've got a couple of little things about what we do. Um, it relates back to that economic diagram. 
So at the moment, the biggest story in our world is that the economy matters more than anything else. Uh, there's a fabulous speech, if you haven't seen it, by Bobby Kennedy uh, in 1968 to the students of Arkansas. Long speech, in the middle of which he says, in short, he says, GDP measures everything except that which makes life worthwhile. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And if we're living and working in, in the world, uh, you know, why are we doing it? What are we here for? Does GDP growth satisfy my needs, my community's needs, other people's needs? Does GDP really even, is it really a real thing? They, you know, these are important questions to us. What are we measuring? How do we assess our progress? That's what Happy City is about doing. And reflective action research. I'm sure you'll be doing quite a chunk of that here. Gratitude really counts as well. So when, that's part of the appreciative thing. Um, the value of saying thank you, the value of appreciating what has worked for you is huge. Uh, psychologically, it's, it's really, really valuable to teams and to yourself in, bu in building and holding your resilience. So, so psychology and research skills are required if you want to manage. So I'm a geographer, remember, originally, or I say I'm a geographer. I'm just someone who's really curious, love science, love all this stuff. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I very quickly, I do get into hot water. Um, I try and understand things as best I can. And I don't know that any of us could do more than that. Um, so there are some key texts, some sources. I won't run through them right now. They're on the slides for you later. I've got some of the books here. Um, there's, oh, I bought the wrong book. <laughs> there's a thin book of appreciative inquiry by Sue Hammond. It's brilliant, really a thin. It's, it's this size, which is why I've got it wrong. It's like this book. This one's called Cash, uh, Once Upon a Conflict. Um, still a good book, but um, really, really valuable resources. Uh, and then just to finish, so I think the balance is, if you like, the simplicity at the heart of all complexity. I said that that yin-yang symbol, that's it. That's enough for me. I'll hold it lightly. That's everything I need to know. Hold things lightly. They're going to change. Let purpose be your, comfort, uh, your compass. And because you can't know everything, relax. Relax. OK? If we relax, we can work together, we can do more. So, whew, okay. over an hour. Uh, apologies for getting, uh, I went off script. So, uh, but I am all yours uh, for as long as you like. Uh, you, I've, I've loaded you up with a bunch of stuff. Thank you very, very much for listening. <laughs>